<sighs> Everything you're about to hear on this podcast is completely improvised. The film title and director's names are kept secret from our guests and team until the moment a prince comes to save you. They're about to work together to create a film that will undoubtedly kiss you and bring you back to life after a terrible curse made you prick your finger on a spinning wheel. But in the meantime, welcome to this week's episode of the Improvised Movie Director Podcast. Godard said, it's not where you take people from, it's where you take them to. That's all very well in the hypothetical, Jean-Luc, but you try telling that to an Uber driver when you've had a few too many sherries in Selfridges. They don't take it well. Tonight's director, however, has moved in many directions, explored many destinations and taken us all on daring adventures. I'm Martina Minow, and I'm joined today by Barney Gubbins, director of Octopussy in Boots. Welcome, Barney. How are you, man? How are you doing, lass? So lovely to see you, Mr Gubbins, or might I call you Barney? Of course you can, man. Um, oh, wonderful. Welcome, Barney. Now, Octopussy in Boots, how very daring. Absolutely, man. Where did the inspiration come from? Well, to be honest with you, it's a bit of a mad story, like... I was, like, um, out in my garden, like, one night, and um, this massive fox came along, right? Yes. And started taking a massive shit in my garden, like. No. And it was a bit scary, to be honest with you, man, because it was locking eyes with me, man. <gasps> I was a bit intimidated, to be honest with you, last. So I just walked back into my house, right? Mm. And then uh, just thought, take a good sleep, and then come back to the next day and see what happens, last. Mm. And then the next morning, right, I went outside, started sweeping up the poo, and then an image appeared amongst the fox poo. What? Oh, why? It was uh, an octopus in boots. My God. Oh, uh, why, man? And um, it inspired me, like. So I started writing the script. And it took me 48 hours, like. But that's what happened. It was an uh, image and some fox poo. Sometimes we can never be sure where inspiration will strike. An image in some fox poo of an octopus in boots. Unbelievable. It's mad, isn't it? Absolutely. And obviously, I've watched it the moment it was released. But for our listeners who might not have seen it yet, what's it all about? So what's it about, like, is um, a super agent, right, mm. <laughs> called um, Agent Octopus. Yes. And what he's doing, like, is he's um, he's found that there's some bad guys, like, working in a boots factory. So what he's done is um, he's gone and uh, become one of those undercover workers, like, you know what I mean? Mm. Like. So he's trying to infiltrate yes. the bad guys in the factory, like, and then, um, yeah, take them down from the inside, like. Yes, yes. I love that espionage angle of secret agent Octopus and his first day in the factory, rather funny, because he doesn't know anything about boots and he's trying to fit in and, well, he makes rather a hash of it. Absolutely, man. Uh, he's trying to break it in, like, with his, his line manager. Um, um, but he's making an absolute kerfuffle about it. Like, an absolute kerfuffle. He's trying to make as many shoes references to it, um, you know, but he's adding a bit too much, like, and, you know, yes. he's coming a bit a bit cross, you know, like a bit of a, a weird lad. Mm, we've all been there. Let's cut to that opening sequence now where we see Agent Octopus enter the boots factory for the first time and, well, as we said, he makes quite the kerfuffle. Well, it looks like here we've got a place full of soul. I've got to make my way to the conveyor belt and wow, look at it go, running across the track. My goodness. Um, hello? What? Hi, sorry, uh, I'm your line manager. My name is Samantha. Um, it's actually a safety issue to be near to the conveyor belt uh, without your proper training. I presume that you're uh, uh, octopus. Samantha, that's right. I'm gonna make sure that I'm gonna work for you as safely as possible. Do I need a hard cap on my head or a hard cap on my shoes? 
Actually, both. Interestingly enough, the uh, risks in a boots factory are very significant. We are manufacturing uh, a lot of footwear here, and also some famous UK pharmaceutical chains, but mostly we are manufacturing footwear. Uh, so here you go, here's your hard hat, your boots, uh, your protective overalls, your mask, your goggles, and uh, I'll get you a couple extra boots for those. Wow, I feel particularly layered. I feel like I'm laced upon laced upon laced with clothing. My goodness. Let me scope out the place, if you don't mind. Of course, go ahead. Uh, over here is uh, is Tammy. She runs the uh, the laces department. All right, pet. I'm just putting some laces and some shoes. And then over here is uh, is is McGregor, and he shoots the rabbits out back. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of rabbits around here. Um, they uh, entice damn foxes, which are a menace at all times. And we should remove foxes from our society as they do nothing but make a mess and spread mange and disease. Sorry, don't know what came over me there. Uh, if you'd like to follow me, I'll take you to your booth. Ha ha, very funny. Ha ha ha, you're very funny, Octopus. Did you say this was the first time you're working in a factory? It's the first time I've ever worked. That's my backstory. Your back... Okay, sure. Well, uh, if this is an entry-level position, here you go. I'll set you up beside the assembly belt, and then, yeah, basically your role is going to be attaching these soles to the rest of the shoe. So be it. Okay, okay I can tell you're going to be a... Have, have a good day, Octopus. I can tell you're going to be a character. And so we see Octopus entering the factory for the first time, getting to know Samantha, getting to know Tammy, trying to fit in, trying to be inconspicuous, but it's not going to work for very long, is it? Uh, absolutely, Pat. It absolutely is, like, um, I have to admit, like, um, it was a lot to take on, writing him as, like, all these, like, kerfuffling words and trying to fit in and all, like, but I think a lot of the people have, like, gravitated towards his, uh, you know, his down-to-earthness, like, Mm, yes, it, I found him quite an interesting character because he comes across as so confident, um, but actually there's a, there's a deep insecurity in Octopus. He, he doesn't seem to feel very confident in his, in his ability to be a spy, to do his job well and well. Doesn't that resonate with us all at some point in time, imposter syndrome? It gets us all. That's absolutely um, bang on, like, um, in fact, uh, to be honest with you, I wrote it into the script, like, that every now and again, like, he'll uh, come up with this affirmation, right? He'll go along to a, a toilet cubicle, like, uh, whenever he's feeling a bit, you know, down, like, and he'll, like, read himself an affirmation, like, because I, I honestly believe that, um, I don't know if you've seen the movie Cool Runnings. Have you seen Cool Runnings, man? Oh, I love Cool Runnings. I, it's magic, isn't it? Um, yes. And... There's a there's like a scene in that where he's like trying to pump himself up by saying like affirmation words. So it's like, you know what, man, I, I, I'd honestly like it if this agent, the superhero agent would be like reading himself an affirmation, man, in the toilet cubicle. Yeah. You know, Barney, Mr. Gubbins, I thought that was really inspiring to have that that moment of reflection in a toilet cubicle. Um, the comings and goings of the people around you, but staying focused in your cubicle, having your affirmations. I love that they happen throughout the movie, and we've actually stitched together quite a few of them in a row, and we're going to play those now. Here's Octopus's affirmations from the toilet. I am strong. I am beautiful. I am man. I am confidence. I am Mountain. Jamaica have a bobsled team. I am wonderful. I am secret ancient. No one knows who I am. I am confidence. I am tricks. I am a confidence trickster. And whilst I am on board with these affirmations, particularly I Am Mountain, one of my favourites, it was a bit of a rookie error to sit in a toilet, not knowing who's either side of the cubicle, and say, I am secret agent, because he gets overheard, doesn't he? I oh, wait, man, it absolutely does. Like, uh, what happened is, like, um, without ruining the plot, like, um, <laughs> there's a, uh, absolutely, man, there was uh, the uh, actual head of the you know the bad guys man 
He was mm. ha- he was taking a shit, man. Next door, next door to him, man. And um, it was he was just next to him listening in, like, and he didn't like say like, oh, oh, you I'm a bad guy, man. He was just like listening in, and then like he he waited until like um the agent man like washed his hands and then left the cubicle, like, and then like he went out and then washed his hands and then like was like let's have a meeting amongst the other bad guys, like, mm. um, and then he brought the news to them, like that oh actually he's not into his boots he's not into his laces he's just uh, a super agent man yes. and he wants to bring us down so what we're going to do about it absolutely and in my experience mr gubbins the the bad men never tell you they're the bad men you have to find that out the hard way i've had many a broken heart because people don't declare early on that they are a bad man oh, i'm sorry about that last... no, it, it's fine barney i'm a strong independent woman of unspecified age and well i'm getting through it I also really appreciate that they both wash their hands. And I thought, you know what, whether you're good or bad, good hygiene, important all round. I appreciated that. Tell us a bit more about the head of the bad guys. What's his backstory? Where, where's his motivation coming from? What's his name? What's he after? Well, the head of the bad guys like, is called um, Dr. Martin Hughes, right? Mm. Um, and it was just a regular story. Like, uh, you know, he, was, uh, he wanted to be like a creative type, like, but his like, father, right? was like uh he had a proper sneezing problem like i'll tell you that no and he's like uh achoo listen what you're gonna do like is you're gonna help me get over my uh allergies like by becoming a a pharmacist or a doctor type like but he was like oh i want to be a creative type like but then there was like a massive argument and so he like just pulled out a knife and just uh stabbed his father like and then that began like the 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 reign of his like evilness um and that's when he was like what i'm gonna do is um get a boots factory like um and run that as like a a facade like for mm. running my actual evil empire like oh so really he he just wanted to be creative and well as someone who's in the creative industries i know what that pull is like it's it's stronger than addiction it's it's powerful the urge to create and design i'd stab someone to have that probably in a different world. So I, I sort of identify with Dr. Martin Hughes. Um, and, and we see that he's very passionate about maintaining and building his empire. But I did feel very worried for Secret Agent Octopus because once the head of the bad guys found out, well, it all got a little hairy, didn't it? It absolutely did. Like, uh, they had a confrontational meeting, right, at, at, the, at the first uh, appraisal. Like, they brought him in on an appraisal, you know, like, when you mm. do, like, your first couple of weeks, like, you have yes. to come into the office, like, to see uh, how you're doing and, like, have you turned up to work, like, on time? Um, mm. And that's when, like, yeah, he, like, confronted him, like, um, and yes. it, it all got a bit, like, steamy in that meeting. I'm, I'm not mm. going to lie. There was some, like, be- but because it was, like, a PG film, like, we had to, like, make sure the swearing was, like, you know, quite acceptable, like. So, yes. yeah, you hear lots of swear words, but they're, like, quite acceptable for a PG level. Yes, I love that focus on inclusion, where you make sure that the young people can still participate and still enjoy it through the use of non-specifically offensive but still very funny-sounding swear words. Loved that. Let's watch that confrontational scene now between Dr. Martin Hughes, comma, head of the bad guys, and secret agent Octopus. Here we go. Thank you for coming in for your three-week appraisal, Octopus. Or should I call you Agent Octopus? I see. You're not here to take me off probation. No, you're here to take me off the Earth. Yes, precisely. Just as I did to my father after he walked into my UCAS application and he said no. You should study medicine, not theatre set design. I told him, Father, there's nothing I want more than to make Doric columns from paper mache. And he said, no, go and be a career doctor, son. Go, research, go. Look into your heart and you know it's true. And I said, stabby, stab, stab. And I'll say the same thing to you, Agent Octopus, you big crumble bum. I don't care whether you're in the creative arts, Doc Martin. I think you're a massive dodge bucket. And I want to make sure that you know, that we know, that we're onto you, you 
Crunkle Fink. Oh, please. The Crunkle Fink was my father. You are just a horn swoggling wallop tin, and I've never ever wanted to floss away from anybody so much. I'll see that my sandal meets your face soon enough, you massive poop nugget. Please do. I'm feeling oddly attracted to you now. It's getting steamy in here. Oh, sorry, that might be because then I've rearranged the piping in the factory. <laughs> he just thought, oh, I'm bored at the assembly line, I'll go fuck with the plumbing. Pretty much. So, this might be the time to meet your maker, or your paper mache maker. Uh, uh, the steam, ah, uh, it's destroying all the parts of me that are made of papier mache. Ah, uh, the, the wetness, the sogginess. I'm becoming soggy myself. Oh, octopus, I'll get you for this. I'll get you! My goodness. Well, that was, that was, I mean, crumble bun, dodge bucket, crinkle think. Very creative. I I'm pure filth like, eh? Yes. Yes, I've not I've not done any horn swoggling since 1994. Oh, that surprises me, Mum. Yes, me too. So, we've banished Dr. Martin. Octopus has ostensibly achieved his mission. He's banished the head of the bad guys, but he's not quite fulfilled, is he? And and we're halfway through the film, and I think, well, where where's his growth? Where's his character arc? What's going to happen next? Talk us through. Well, to be honest with you, like, um, in the last two weeks, then, that he's been working in uh, the boots factory. Mm. He's actually discovered like he's got a undercover passion for boots, man. He loves the boots. He does like. So what he's actually gonna do, like, um, is actually he's giving up the secret agent business, like, um, and then he's gonna take on the boots factory. Um, but he's gonna start putting on his like own like um, spin on things, man. Like uh, to get the workers on board, like, because the workers like were big fans of the the bad guy, man. So mm. he has to like try and put new incentives in place, like um, Cake Wednesdays. Mm. He has to bring in a, a few cakes, man, and say, enjoy the cake, man. We're all eating cakes today. We're not making boots. Like, we're just eating cakes. He has to do all that, like, to get everybody on board, like. Yes, and, and we see a different side of him. He, he doesn't need the affirmations anymore. He's in his element. He loves being in the boots factory. And there's a rousing speech he gives to the workers who aren't on board initially, but he's so inspiring that they can't help but want to work for, for Octopus, or Mr. Octopus, as he now goes by. Let's cut to that scene on the, on the factory floor where he rouses them up with Cake Wednesdays and other such incentives. Can I also add, like, because um, this factory was, like, up north, like, um, because he wanted to communicate with the northern workers, like, he um, put on a deep northern accent, man. You know, there's no better way to connect with a person. Here we go, with a deep northern accent, Mr. Octopus rousing the workers. You know, ever since I came in, I knew that you lot would be my protégés. You'd be my, my subjugates, but in a positive way. You would enjoy my cake Wednesdays. You would enjoy my... Uh, ping pong Friday afternoons. You would enjoy my two cans of punk IPAs stood right in those fridges on standby, but nobody ever drinks them. I knew that this day would come, and here we are. Look at me, Mikey Octopus, with a with a fan base of people who are here to make shoes. I've got one thing, and one thing to say to us. Let's make sure we sew these up nicely, do up the laces, slip in the tongue, have some soul, and get ourselves a shoe. Mikey, Mikey, he's very good. That's Mikey. <laughs> I guess they liked the speech. 
Oh, I loved it. I loved it seeing them all come together and they're making shoes better and faster than ever before. Absolutely, man. Um, they make a big deal of it and um, they start improving their productivity, like, and mm. start making a lot of profit, like. And then that's when we see, like, the twist in the character, man. We see, like, he's becoming, like, a businessman. Um, and that's when we see, like, the, uh, he, like, goes onto, like, Dragon's Den, like, and tries to get a bit more, like, money, like, for the business, like. Yes, yes. Who needs affirmations when you've got rocketing profits? He's, he's quite confident. We see him absolutely smash it at the Dragon's Den. Um, I loved the pitch scene, actually. And the fact that you got the real dragons involved, wonderful. Absolutely, man. We had to, like, uh, bargain with Duncan Ballantyne, like. We had to make mm. sure, like, he had his, like rider in the dressing room like yes, that was yes, no man. easy deal man getting like a, a mini horse like for him but you know it's duncan ballantyne man we gotta do it like i know duncan well and believe me that's not the worst thing he's had in his rider yes so you had duncan ballantyne and peter jones and deborah meaden um and another fourth dragon whose name i can't remember uh let's watch that scene now today in dragon's den Theo Pofitas and the others welcome Mikey Octopus, an excitable young entrepreneur in the shoe business. Mikey is looking to pitch to the dragons for some money to continue making some dollar. All right, so Mikey, would you like to tell us about your product? Hello, dragons. My name is Michael Octopus, and I'm here to ask for a million pound investment for a 1% stake in my company. Shoes. Shoes make shoes. It's perfect. Everyone has them, some more than one, and everyone needs shoes. The investment is pretty much foolproof. The shoes themselves are pretty nice. I'd like to open it up now to questions. Uh, hello, yes, Peter Jones here. Um, just wondering, really, about the shoes. Um, is there anything that particularly makes them um, uh, unique? You know, what's your USP here? Well, these shoes, as well as being handcrafted, they go on your feet. Perfect for occasions such as walking, standing about, afternoon tea, and a long walk on the beach after you've had a long walk elsewhere. Right, and you do know that, that all, all shoes do that. So we're entering a captive market. Foolproof, I would say. I see. Um, I don't often do this, chaps, but do you mind if we do a dragon's huddle? Yes, I think that's a great idea. Yes, that sounds fine to me. I don't know about this fella. Go, go on, Duncan. What, what are your thoughts? Oh, I have to say, you know, I have a lot of things to say. I, I, I just think that I know they have shoes already. Why don't you know who has shoes either? Come on, you know. After the longest possible dragon's huddle lasting three days and 86 minutes, the dragons have decided whether or not to invest. Um... So, uh, good news for you, Mikey. Um, we've all decided to invest. If you're willing to offer 1% between the four of us, we'll pay you £4 million for it. We're so engaged by this concept of shoes. I mean, yes, everybody wears them, everybody puts them on, takes them off. Um, yes, and I think it's a, a, a great opportunity. And, and obviously, Duncan, um, Duncan has ridden off on his horse. Um, but I'm sure if we just open the window here, we'll be able to um, hear his final bit of Duncan Manatine wisdom. Here it comes. I'm in. <laughs> and we're all in with you. Congratulations, Mikey. Marvellous. And so Mikey's got all of this funding. He's got the factory. He's making more shoes than there are feet in the UK. There is a shoe surplus. There's, there's shoe mountains in Huddersfield. It's, it's all out of control. And still, he's not happy. And we see an unlikely reunion between he and Dr. Martin Hughes, don't we? Absolutely, Mum. But what it is, like, I think he felt like he was being a bit of a dick, like, because he wasn't being true to himself either. So, like, he was doing this super agent stuff, like, and to be honest, he had, like, uh, inner unhappiness, like, that's why he was doing all the affirmation work, like. Mm. Then he realized that once he found his true passion, that maybe, um, you know, the bad guy was, like, uh, you know, 
just a bit like you know misunderstood like so all of a sudden like when he's like serving people in Huddersfield who turns up but yep his arch enemy like all melted mm. a, a bit but you know still like you know the arch enemy and all that mm. and we see an emotional like reunion and Barney I must ask obviously this is an action film but I feel like there's a strong moral message in here what is it you're trying to get your listeners to feel uh to be honest with you man um originally it was just like following the script from the the Fox VCs man mm. but you know looking back on it like I have to say, it's just, you know, we got to understand each other just a, a little bit more, man. Yes, yes. And, and I actually thought this scene in particular, it's quite a lot of emotion here, deep spiritual and philosophical connection. And, you know, I like to predict who's going to be in the awards this year. And I think this particular scene might put you in the running. Absolutely, man. And I told them on set, like, make sure you cry like 10 times more than you usually should, man. So we used to, we, what we did like was like get loads of like um, onions on set. Like yes. it's proper emotional, man. So they're like sobbing and crying loads, man. Yes. When in doubt, weep. I always find it works. Let's cut to that emotional reunion between Dr. Martin Hughes and uh, Mikey Octopus and it all gets a little bit teary. Here we go. That'll be 20 pounds, please. Thank you. Have a good day. <gasps> My word. <laughs> My Michael Octopus, after so long, it's you. <laughs> it's you. Dog Martin! <laughs> 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 I noticed that Huddersfield has been overwhelmed by a surplus of mules and loafers, <laughs> more so than usual. <laughs> if this is your doing, undoubtedly, does it make you happy to be so successful? Does it make you happy? Is it what you always wanted to do? <laughs> I thought it did, but now I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, 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 my friend, is something I understand. Well, it is what drove me to kill my own <laughs> Of course. <laughs> Since then, I've been a model of good and, and and creativity. All I wanted to do was to do what I wanted with my life. Well, 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 what? Come back. Please, just come back. Join me. Join me in the company and you can... We can make some boots in your name. We can call them Doc Martins. And they'll be so successful. And it will be because of us. That's a great name yeah. for a shoe. Lesbians are gonna love that. Hey. <laughs> I'm allowed to say that. It's okay. I would love that, Mikey. Bring it in for a big hug. Thank you. Thank you! <laughs> oh, I love it when I see a friendship form like that. Absolutely, like, I think it's a real journey for the characters, like, and they had a reunion and started running the business together, like, but because of the unfortunate paper mache melting, like, they had to put um, Doc Martin in the back room, like, you know, sorting out deliveries and all that. But, you know, it's a successful business on like. Absolutely. And and seeing, you know, I've seen Doc Martens out on the street, on people's feet. They're out there. I see them. And, and I lo what I love is that we see we see them both living out their passions. Dr. Martin Hughes, he's always wanted to be behind the scenes, making things. And there he is. And and. Mikey Octopus, he's running that successful business. He feels affirmed. They start doing productions, theatre productions in the factory. They put on kinky boots. It's wonderful. I just love seeing them all come together like that. Absolutely, man. And um, there is actually a number that I thought we should close on because it's like, you know, a wonderful moment, like, between the friends where they, like, put on a musical number, like. It's like a nice way to bring 
everything together like absolutely that is a wonderful point on which to close so we're going to cut to now the the musical number which is actually delivered in rap closing out why they both love the factory and what it means to them here we go walking here in these boots today what you're gonna see yeah what you're gonna say walking here with these boots today what you gonna see what you gonna say walking walking real fast walking like i got these boots real fast i'm gonna tell you everything in these boots real fast I'm gonna hit it, I'm gonna hit it, I'm gonna hit it with the coal. I'm gonna be on fire, cause I've got so much soul. Yeah. I'm walking with these boots today. Oh yeah. I'm walking, don't care what people say. I'm walking with these boots today, ah oh, yeah. I'm walking, don't care what people say. Yeah, out of my door, I'm stepping. The Andes, great dot Martins, I'm repping. Gonna hit the pavement, go really far. Don't need to get out in a car, because I can walk all day and wear every soul away. But then I can go to the factory and they'll replace this soul just for the glory. me. I'm walking with these boots today. Oh yeah, I'm walking, don't care what people say. Oh yeah, I'm walking with these boots today. Oh yeah, I'm walking, don't care what people say. Oh, well, what a glorious way to end a film. Very strong message of friendship and pursuing your passions and collaboration. Uh, I, I loved the film, and I have heard rumour that you have another film in the works. So tell us a little more about it. Uh, well, to be honest with you, um, the fox came back like um, last night, right? Mm. Um, and this morning when I was cleaning up the feces, like, I saw a clear image, man, of um, oh. a world of toys, like, they're coming alive, like, right? Mm. But um, they're trying to also, like, uh, pretend like they're not alive at the same time. Oh, yes. So uh, I thought, like... It's the story about toys, like, mm. maybe something in that lake. You know what I mean, man? I think that could be a real hit. What's it called? I was thinking maybe, like, um, you know, Toys Come Alive, like. Toys Come Alive, like. Well, I'm very excited to see that. And actually, I've got a clip of it, a trailer that you've made today in a, a burst of productivity. Would you mind terribly if we play the clip for Toys Come Alive, like, for our listeners? Absolutely, man. Um, I'm really honoured to say, like, uh, we got, like, a big uh, uh, cast for this, like, Arnold Schwarzenegger came in, like, also, you know, um, because I had such a good relationship with um, Deborah Mead and she's back and all. Uh, so that's the leading line, like. Oh, wonderful. Absolutely, man. So, yeah, this is my uh, trailer, man. Um, it's always come alive, like. Can't wait. Listeners, here we go. Directed by my friend and yours, Barney Gubbins, featuring Arnold Schwarzenegger and Deborah Mead and Toys Come Alive Like, inspired by Fox Poo. Here we go. In a world where usually toys are dead... One... Small child's room is about to get a whole lot more interesting. All right, I think he's gone to work. Everybody up and at him! Oh, hey! Oh, look at me! I'm Mahogany, the cowboy rootin' tootin' who likes to have fun but also gets incredibly stressed. And I'm Fizz Darkman. A brave spatial explorer and astronaut, but sometimes my hero complex can blind me to the needs of my friends, which will always come through in the end. And I'm a slinky dog in constant pain. In this world, one thing is a true fact. Toys come alive. 
starring the summer's hottest stars, Deborah Meaden of Dragon's Den. I'm out, and the rest of you should be too. And Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, from being governor of California and all those great 80s movies. Yes, we need to get to the spaceship now. That's him. <laughs> Toys come alive like in cinemas in Newcastle and nowhere else from 2023. Oh, I can't wait! Uh, well, thank you, Lass. Um, yeah, to be honest with you, man, I think it's going to be a smash hit, man. And hopefully, like, we can have, like, some sequels. You know what I mean? Like, like Toys Come Alive, like, two. Um, you know, maybe a third one, man. And, you know, who knows, man? Maybe a fourth, you know? Absolutely. And, Barney, I'll be there for every single one. What an absolute pleasure to have you with us today. Now, before we go, do you have any final words of wisdom for our listeners? Uh, yeah. Uh, to be honest with you, man, like, next time, like, a, a cat or a dog, like, takes a shit in your garden, like, uh, make sure you look at it, man, before you, like, sweep it up, man. That's all I'm gonna say, because inspiration, man, strikes you wherever it is, man, and make sure you're ready, man. That's all I gotta say, man. Wonderful. Be ready for inspiration. It can come in the most curious of places. Thank you. Thank you very much, like... The Improvised Movie Director podcast featured Sabrina Luisi as Martina Minow, with resident improvisers Vicky Hawley and Ryan J. Murphy. With special thanks to this week's guest, Mandeep Singh. You can find Mandeep performing at Hoopla Impro at The Miller on Friday the 25th of March with Hattrick, the improvised sketch show. IMDP is produced and edited by Steve Tanner. Theme music by Matt Brown and Johnny Griffiths. Episode artwork by Marty Sears. The Improvised Movie Director podcast will be doing a live recording on the 31st of March at the Miller Pub. To find out more, follow us at Improv Movie Pod on Instagram or Facebook. The Improvised Movie Director podcast is a four foot one films production. <laughs>